One of the most profitable food business ideas to run in 2020 is a home-based food business, or as it's known, a cottage food business. In this video, I'm going to give you all the information you need to know in order to get your food business, whether it's a home-based bakery, candy business, up and running in the state of Arizona, and we're going to do it right now. All right, so in the state of Arizona, it can be a hugely profitable business to start from home. And for the biggest reason is, well, it's from your home. And that's a minimal investment right off the bat. When I started my retail bakery, of course, one of the most biggest expenses that I had to incur was the rent of the building. Using your home as the small business to begin with is genius. And the multitude of tax benefits are enormous. But that is definitely something you want to double check with your accountant. Okay, so let's get started and find out the six steps to get a home-based food business up and running in the state of Arizona. So really quick, the one thing you want to remember about cottage food businesses is that many of them allow you to produce a variety of foods, but locally sold. You can't really sell these online. So if you're starting something from home, it has to be either sold at a farmer's market, a festival or a fair or something to that effect. So do keep that in mind. Now, to give you even more resources, check down in the description. I'll give you a couple links to some of the state of Arizona's websites that will help you understand um, exactly more as far as the type of packaging, where you can sell, how much you can sell, and all that good stuff. So the six steps, I'm going to get started with step number one, where can you sell? So some of the allowed um, uh, outlets, if you will, that will allow you to sell to um, are farmer's markets, uh, actually restaurants, events roadside stands online. And when I say online, you actually can sell products online, but you have to deliver them in person. It's not something where you can sell it and ship it outside of the state. Now, one of the really cool things about Arizona's cottage food law is that you can, can, you can actually sell a product to grocery stores or like a cafe or even like a coffee shop. Um, so this is where they can turn around and resell your products as well. So in Arizona, that's really something unique because of the fact that a lot of states don't allow you to do that as far as selling to grocery stores or retail stores or that type of thing. So now you can either pick up or you can actually deliver the product yourself. Remember, once you make the transaction, you have to be the one to actually do the delivery or they can come. If you're fine with it, you can actually have them come to your house and they can definitely pick up from there. So that's, that's something that is available as well. So you're probably wondering, well, this sounds great. What kind of foods can I make? Through most cottage food laws, when you're producing food at home, um, what they, what, it's called a potentially hazardous food item, which is something that's time and temperature sensitive. Uh, normally, it's not allowed. And that would be items that have to have refrigeration. Uh, they are very, very special uh, temperatures that they have to be held at. So that's something that you can't do. But a lot of the stuff that you can are like breads, cookies, cakes, uh, brownies and donuts, muffins. Uh, you can even do like tortillas or bagels and biscuits. Most of these are considered baked goods, of course, uh, but they're really non-potentially hazardous. There's nothing that's really dangerous as far as uh, meats or proteins or cheeses or any of that type of ingredient put into these products. Now, one of the biggest margin things to ever make when you make them in big batches is candy. Uh, candy is something that you can do um, everything from different nut brittles to chocolates, um, fudge, truffles, these types of products you can definitely do. Dry mixes. Uh, even like seasonings or spices, uh, spice. I did a couple of videos uh, back about a spice business from home. Spices in general, I can tell you, are one of the huge profit margins because they're so cheap when you get them in bulk. And if you can create different spice blends, you can make a very good profit on these. Uh, when it comes to snacks, you can do things, like, of course, like popcorn uh, to go with that kettle corns, uh, chocolate covered items like pretzels and Oreos and that type of thing. Um, caramel corn as well, granolas even. These are also items that are non-potentially hazardous also. So, now, some of the food products that are prohibited. These would be obviously um, the types of products that are really either they're acidic or they're, they're items that have to be kept at certain time or temperature sensitive as well. And the, the list is pretty extensive, but a handful of them would be like meat jerkies, uh, mustards or ketchups, uh, honeys, uh, tamales, 
Uh, pet food is definitely something that wouldn't fall under the cottage food as well. You couldn't do that. Uh, perishable baked goods, that would be anything that's got cheese on the top or a refrigerated item that have to be cheese. You have uh, fruit butters and salsas and fermented foods. All of these have certain types of acid level, pH levels, and you got to really be very careful when you get uh, these types of products and want to make them. And those would fall under a different type of, of licensing and probably potentially in a commercial kitchen. Uh, that's a different licensing altogether. So now number three, uh, restrictions. So what are some of the restrictions? So when you have a home-based food business, uh, you've got to have a handful of, of things that you definitely make sure that you cannot do. So for instance, like if you're preparing food products in your own kitchen, uh, for one of them is pets. Pets are, are an item are a are restricted to come into that area where you're preparing the food products. Any hair and pet dander, that type of thing. You don't want cats jumping up on the kitchen stove while you're trying to prepare a food product under the cottage food law. Um, when you also want to sell online, as I mentioned in the opening, you can do that, but you have to you have to do that within your state. Normally, interstate sales is something that won't be allowed as well. Um, also, when you have children, if you have children. Uh, you don't want to have them during the process of using your kitchen for the commercial purpose of making the food products. You don't want to have them in there as well. So you really want to be focused on treating this as a business and doing such um, and making sure that your products are prepared following the guidelines that Arizona has set up. All right. So now step number four, the business legality end of it. So definitely I would recommend you incorporate yourself. You should incorporate as a business. Treat this as a business, not a hobby. And you want to separate your liability by actually creating that business and forming a business because it's really going to protect you from a legal standpoint. Uh, also, I recommend that you, <clears throat> excuse me, you also have to register yourself as a business uh, through the health department. And you can actually do that online in Arizona. Now, one of the things you may, want to, you may have within your counties, now keep in mind, the cities and counties also have ordinances, rules, and regulations set up as well. The state may have certain rules, but as it trickles down to where you live in the city or county, sometimes there's a food handler, what's known as a food handler card, or a food handler's course that you may have to take depending upon what's required. And they're, they're normally run about $20, $25, bucks, maybe $30. They're not very, very expensive. But double check on that. And uh, like I said before, I'll have a whole bunch of resources down in the description for you. So... The next thing up is step number five, food insurance and also car insurance, believe it or not. Now, this is not something that's required, but I will recommend this only because, again, I'm trying to look out for you and you may want to protect yourself even more by having the food business liability insurance. That is something that you can get very inexpensively. It's about five hundred to five hundred, five hundred to six hundred dollars a year, and that is something that will protect you and give you a really good protection as far as someone getting sick or potentially having allergens or allergic reactions to food, um, and also liability for the production of your products and such. So, food insurance is something I would highly recommend. And now also car insurance. Now here's what I mean by that: if you're using a personal car or if you buy a van and you need commercial auto insurance. Uh, you want to make sure you get a quote, figure out, go online and get some quotes for it for business. So that would be a commercial automobile liability insurance. It's something that actually a lot of, uh, of cottage food operators really don't think about because when you take your food products either to a farmer's market, a festival, a fair or something, and you're using your own vehicle, you're using that for commercial purposes, right? So you want to make sure you have some type of a policy that would cover that as a business, OK, or if you end up actually buying a van or some type of delivery van or delivery vehicle, getting the right quote for a commercial auto insurance policy is something that you definitely want to look into. So give that some thought, too. So the last thing I wanted to cover up is also number six. It's going to be how do you label? They actually do. State by state has specific guidelines about labeling food products. Uh, you want to have um, the business address. So, of course, this is actually your home address where you produce the product. Not a, It can't be like a P.O. box, but you've got to have the home address. The business name, whatever it is, if it's uh, Sarah's uh, Cookie Company or something like that, then Sarah's Cookie Company needs to be on there if that's the business name. The ingredients, of course, you've got to have the ingredients on there because someone may have potential allergens or allergic reactions to certain ingredients. So you want to make sure that's covered as well. You got to have the product name and the pro uh, phone number of where it's being produced. Of course, that would be uh, your home phone number. If you don't like to give that out, you can actually get a second line in your home as a business line, business phone, and that will be your actual business phone number. 
Now, lastly, is really super important is, is a statement. There is a specific disclaimer, a disclaimer that you have to have on there, basically stating that um, your kitchen is most, <clears throat> basically most states have this, but your kitchen's not necessarily inspected by any entity or any type of government agency if it doesn't have those inspections. So somebody who purchases your products knows that they're not coming from a commercial facility, it's actually coming from a home. So that's something you definitely wanna put on there. So. Those are the, the top six steps, six steps to help you get your food business up and running in your home as a home-based business, uh, make it a very profitable business, actually it can be, uh, from the state of Arizona. So double check those the, in the description for those additional resources. If the video is helpful, please do give me a big thumbs up. I sincerely appreciate the feedback. If you have any other questions about uh, creating a home-based food business, let me know, and I'll, I'll hop to on those questions as soon as I possibly can, and I'll see you guys on our next video. So if you're looking to start your own food business, check out these videos for more resources. Profitable food business ideas, how to start a food truck business, learn all about cottage food laws to create a home business for selling food, and how to start a catering business from home. These and many more small food business ideas are all at your fingertips when you subscribe to Marketing Food Online.